Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 26,000 subscribers. Can we get to 27k by the end of the month? Please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel to help me get there. But anyways, let's dive into today's topic. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez made noise at a congressional hearing about poverty the other day where she showcased her lack of intellect and understanding about what a metaphor is. So without further ado, who's got the clip? Ms. Hutchinson, I also want to thank you about bringing up the poverty draft and this idea of a bootstrap. You know, this idea and this metaphor of a bootstrap started off as a joke because it's a physical impossibility to lift yourself up by a bootstrap, by your shoelaces. It's physically impossible. The whole thing is a joke. So apparently AOC does not understand metaphors. Nobody is asking you to physically pull yourself up by your shoelaces when you are poor. And the notion that the metaphor started off as a joke is somewhat false. A quick Wikipedia search found that it was used as an idiom in the 1800s on two separate occasions to describe an impossible task. However, it was first commonly applied to self-improvement beginning in the 1920s. The bottom line is, however, that most people's own decisions will cause their own demise, and it is very possible to escape poverty by making good choices. Brookings Institution, rated as left-wing bias and very high factual reporting by leftist media bias fact check, released a study in which they found that there are three simple ways to escape poverty. Graduating from high school, having no kids out of wedlock while waiting until after 21 to get married, and having a full-time job. If you do all three of these, you have a 74% chance of joining the middle class, whereas 2% remain in poverty. If you do not do any of these, you have a 76% chance of living in poverty, and just a 7% chance to join the middle class. And this study ran true across ethnic lines as well. And keep in mind, the study was released in 2007, and we have a much better economy now than we had then, so the numbers for mobility may be even higher today. Personal responsibility exists and plays a big role. People make poor decisions sometimes, and sometimes they must live with the consequences. And look, I'm not going to say that it is not harder to join the middle class when you're in poverty. Culture and environment plays a big role, and culture must be reformed in order to fully make a change. Still, the fact that big government is the answer could not be further from the truth. Let's look into these three rules a little bit more. Rule one is graduating from high school, and it's the big government Democrats who want to keep kids in failing schools while they simply want to throw money at them and that money never reaches the students. It's conservatives who want to give vouchers out for school choice to better education. I have seen firsthand growing up in the suburbs of Detroit how so many inner city kids can come to a suburban school and get a much better education and live a much better life. Rule two is having no children out of wedlock. One of the main reasons why we see rising numbers of this is because LBJ springboarded family breakdown during his war on poverty nonsense. Still, culture plays a role here too, and the left's destruction of family values and demonization of abstinence, particularly in the black and Hispanic communities, are certainly not helping. Rule three is having a full-time job. Even though careless, global-oriented trade policies supported by establishment politicians on both sides of the aisle have shipped too many jobs away, this is not something that is hard to find with a high school diploma. Which takes us back to rule one. A high school diploma will usually grant you access to some sort of higher education, whether it be a tech school or community college at a minimum, as long as you take easy classes, study at least a little, go to class, and get above a C average. It's not that hard to accomplish. Even if you don't do this, a high school diploma earns roughly 50% more on average than a high school dropout. And then the left will try to get in this whole argument about wages, particularly the minimum wage, which we can and will discuss in another video, but I don't want to go too far off topic. AOC's main point is that social mobility in America is low and that it is hard to escape poverty. Yet, is that even the case? The left likes to point to this Gatsby curve to show that countries with bigger government and lower income inequality have more income mobility. Yet this curve has been critiqued many times, mainly due to it using a poor measure of income mobility. A countless number of other studies have shown that income mobility has not decreased in the past 30 years or so. And a much larger sample of metro areas and intergenerational mobility showed that the correlation was almost zero compared to the original 0.6, especially when controlling for the type of metro area. On top of this, we must ask ourselves the true income mobility of America. Mark R. Rank, an economist commonly cited by the Obama administration, found that 84% of children will exceed their parents' economic situation. 
Another one of Frank's studies showed that 12% of the American public will spend a year in the top 1%, 39% will spend a year in the top 5%, and 73% of people will spend a year in the top 20. While leftists will complain that they do not always stay there, that single-handedly contradicts their main point made on income mobility. Another study from Just Facts, a center-right nonprofit that is vigorously peer-reviewed from all sides, showed that the bottom quintile in America is richer than the average person in most European nations in terms of wealth by consumption, and many of those nations have the big government social programs that AOC and her friends love pushing. After this whole AOC hearing fiasco, her handlers took to her Twitter account in order to do damage control. And her handlers may be a little bit smarter than her, but apparently not by much as evidenced here. She falsely claims that 60% of wealth is inherited, when most studies put the number in between 35 and 45%, and that plenty of that wealth is not actually inherited by the very rich. Her number comes from Robert Reich, a partisan hack who don't walk run productions, infamously destroyed on the economics of immigration, so take the information she uses as you wish. A new report from CNBC found that most of the richest people in the world are actually self-made. She then asks what bootstrapping means to Republicans using Trump as an example, where no person alive is claiming that Donald Trump pulled himself out of poverty by his bootstraps. However, Trump did still turn millions into billions and brought his family business to the world stage, working with those on the bottom and the top in the process, so maybe she's just jealous. And how dare she call him corrupt when she's the one wanting to raise congressional salaries to pay for her nicer furniture? Trump's network has actually declined since taking office and he's working without pay. And dare I even mention the corruption of her other squad members, which I will restrain myself from doing so because of time constraints. Now, she also says that it would be narcissistic for herself to say that she picked herself up by her bootstraps, despite actually doing so mainly herself in a cheap attempt for virtue signaling. I have to give credit to her where it's due, and she did do this mostly by herself, and while people may have helped her along the way, she did this 100% without the federal government coming to save her. She then complains about how we do not have an accurate cost of living measure adjustment for poverty, which is false. We have the supplemental poverty index, so her bill probably that she's trying to put forward on the issue would not really do much to change the poverty rate beyond that. Besides, she had said herself that the poverty rate should be $40,000, which is completely ridiculous. I make much less than that and get by just fine every month, proving out how further out of touch with reality she really is. Victim mentality is what she plays to. She does not care about her constituents one bit. She wants to only keep her people down. She is the one that shipped 25,000 high-paying jobs out of her district. She is the one that lauded New York City imposing a rental regulation about broker fees that even the New York Times stated could cause her district many jobs and decline wages for brokers. It already overnight increased rent prices as well. She is the one that tells an underprivileged audience in her district, in a stereotypically urban voice, ain't nothing wrong with being a bartender, ain't nothing wrong with that, then turns around and complains about how people in her district cannot escape out of poverty by working the remedial jobs she is praising. She pulled herself up by her bootstraps with no help from the federal government, but does not want anybody else to. That's not liberalism, that's the textbook definition of tyranny. AOC, you should be ashamed of yourself. And that's my take. Thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, hit the big red button to subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, join the subreddit, join the Discord, and donate to the Patreon links in description. See you next time. Red Eagle, out.